Hi, this is Frost from 1349. You're watching Chaos TV. Okay, so what's up everybody? Chaos TV is today here at Steel Fest Festival and we have here Frost from the band 1349 and Saturicon as guests. So first of all, hello and welcome to Chaos TV, man. Thank you so much. So, thinking about like playing with Saturicon compared to 1349, is there like some kind of like different mood within you when you are playing with different bands? Mm, yes, uh, I feel that way. Okay. Uh, 1349 is uh, much more about, you know, high octane grimness all the way. Uh, very, very intense and energetic. Uh, and well, it's a different vibe and different energy to it. And I connect to that before before playing. And, and Satyricon has something else. So I connect to that in, in, a, in a different way. And it also feels very, very different on stage and the way I perform. I mean, it's basically two different worlds we talk about here. Okay. I've, I've heard that you are like the kind of guy who practice a lot like before the show. So does your like warm-up routines differ between these two bands? Yes. Yes, a little. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as I said, um, I connect to slightly different energies and, and vibes in the two different bands. Uh, and 3049 is very very intense I want to you know really get in touch with that fifth gear or even sixth yeah. gear in the body right uh, and it's also perhaps a little more monochrome than satyricon so I kind of I want to feel that okay. I want to I want to be there mentally before I actually go out there and do it physically is it, is it um, just like preparing with the drum kit or do you do some kind of like other things to basically get into the right mood? I have put on the, the makeup now because uh, it was necessary to do that before uh, going to the festival area. That is one of the steps I take uh, and that is very much a mental preparation yeah. in part of uh, or as well as being part of uh, of um, the visual aspect of the band uh, but it's something that kind of tells the brain uh, where to go where to channel the energies and, and the resources that you have uh, and I do other kinds of uh, mental routines as well. I do a little yoga and I warm up doing a little of what I'm actually about to do, but you know, taking it slowly and, and um, working my way up to that intensity level, which is close to what's going on on stage. So you don't like feel like basically like lose your, your energy while practicing before the show. I've heard that you can even practice like for a couple of hours before the show. I rather feel that I build energy. But okay. I mean, there's a limit for everybody. I'm not doing it in order to to take it to a ridiculous level. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of found out what works and um, and yeah, I like to be be working for for a while before going out there. So you recently licensed your beer with the 1349, so could you tell us a bit about that? Are you a beer lover yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, I care a lot for for quality of taste. Um, I could definitely enjoy a very good bottle of wine and I can enjoy a good bottle of beer. And Which do you prefer, by, by the way? Are you a wine lover or...? It depends a little on the setting. Uh, actually, I... I more started out as a wine lover actually but something I found out was that whenever I had done shows for instance uh, and was to have a glass of really good wine afterwards it was really difficult for me to appreciate it okay because there was uh, all this red energy going yeah. on in the head and the that taste of blood you have in in the mouth you know when you have been really uh, going all the way down to the cellar and, yeah, and yeah. draining yourself of that last bit of energy uh, and you're very very exhausted perhaps uh, and uh, it, it, it's just 
difficult to really appreciate you know the depth of a, of a high quality wine uh, well I've found that uh, just having uh, a good refreshing beer was something that I could actually do it's it sort of like gives you like a relaxed feeling afterwards yeah and it's perhaps more thirst quenching and you can drink a little of yeah, it you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and it doesn't all only provide taste but it also gives you a good feel and it quenches your thirst which is quite necessary yeah. uh, obviously you are like consuming a lot of when you are playing obviously uh, 7.30.49 were offered to actually have a beer produced back in 2010 okay. uh, when a fan who also happened to be a brewer uh, showed up after the show he was very happy about the show and he said that he would like to help us you know did you had like a different kind of options where to choose from when you were deciding for the final product or how did it go no, I, I, I worked out the idea myself I actually spent quite some time and I realized that this was actually gonna happen and I thought that why not do a proper thing out of it uh, after all I could actually realize a pretty good idea here so uh, then I thought about it quite a lot and eventually some uh, clear ideas were forming that you know we should have one light beer and one uh, one uh, very dark beer that was you know uh, absolute overload of everything but it also felt fine to have a very thirst quenching light crisp beer that you would like to have after show right Obviously, so, um, I guess that's a good drink to have. So I shared those ideas with uh, the rest of the guys uh, in the band, and they they really supported my ideas, and I, and I took it from there with uh, with the brewmaster, and eventually, you know, now we're about to actually work on a third beer. Okay, okay. So, so, so there is more in the works. There's more in the works, and this has grown to be a um, quite serious project, but one that we really enjoy. So. With with your other band Saturicon, you just released uh, the remastered version for Nemesis Divina. So, where did you like actually come up with the idea to re-release the album? We thought that if we're actually gonna mark this 20th anniversary, yeah, uh, we should really do it properly, yeah, or else not do it yeah, at yeah, all, yeah. Uh, and. We wanted really to bring the album itself into focus, uh, and hence we we thought that it should be it should be brought back there in a, a slightly more timeless fashion, yeah. something that honors the original. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to see if we could make the cover look a little more classic and timeless. Uh, to see if we could do something with uh, with the mastering of the album to make it shine even a little more without really touching the original that much yeah uh, and also follow up you know doing shows but still it was very important that we did something to the album itself because that's what we're celebrating and for Satyricon it's always the albums that matters. Yeah, and I think that's something different compared to what other bands have done, that they have just played those anniversary shows, but not actually basically re-recorded or remastered anything. No, um, that is probably right, and for us it's also a pretty special occasion when we decide to do it. Because, you know, looking back and, and getting very caught up in what has already happened is not Satyricon's way of doing it. We always try to move forward and we're we're not about, you know, past achievements. But then again, a 20th anniversary for an album that meant a lot to very many fans yeah, and that yeah. brought Satyricon, as we know it today, out to a larger world and, and kind of also marked the beginning of a more professional and ambitious project. Well, that's worth the celebration, we thought. Yeah. Um, and then this would be the way to do it for us. So if you would have to like pick like your own top three like favorite albums from the Saturicon discography, would Nemesis Divina be one of them? No, it would be the last three albums. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think we get better. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. But I still, I still like Nemesis Divina a lot, and I'm proud of everything we've done. But I think that. You're getting we have, yeah, higher we and have, higher along we have the moved 
we have moved forward uh, and it's great to connect with that rather wild power and the kind of energies that Nemesis Divina has uh, but still I feel that Satyricon today is a way more serious band and musically speaking we are much more accomplished yeah and obviously a more mature in a way also yeah mature in 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 a fortunate sense i think when you have now like played the new so like the nemesis divina album on its entirety live has it like brought up like any good back flash from your childhood when you have played it live in 1996 Yeah, in a way, uh, and I've been asked about it many times, yeah. so I'm I'm kind of forced to reflect a little upon it, uh, and then you know I, I have remembered lots of things that I initially had forgotten. That yeah, I've been yeah, reminded yeah. by people that were there, you know, uh, uh, and yeah, most of those memories anyway are are uh, are good ones. But most of all, I think it's. Um, find to connect with the album itself and that spirit and I I see you know when I listen to the album and, and when we perform the songs live that there's a very particular kind of vibe to it and I can sense that you know it's very wild it's yeah, it is. uncontrolled uh, I sense that we were much younger when doing this and re really not you know analyzing and we didn't have the experience Um, do you feel? Do you like, feel like more of a, like a so rebellion bad, really. in a way? What? What? Do you feel like more of a, like a rebellion in a way back in the days? Yeah, it's more that you know, younger, wilder yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, a bit in the end about like your future plans in general. So first of all, like with the 1349. So what kind of plans do you guys have? It's uh, it's gonna be a new album. We have quite a few ideas now uh, we will still continue playing live with uh, with um, massive cauldron of chaos for a while uh, there's still work to be done actually with uh, with the album um, and we're gonna make one more music video um, we were actually in a meeting yesterday okay. about uh, how that's going to be uh, and I think it's gonna be a very very good project uh, But apart from that, we're uh, we're also going to take 3049 uh, much further, and I think that we got in touch with something when working with the latest album that we're going to investigate a little more musically. Okay. Uh, but 3049 is of course going to remain a very very hyper intensive uh, and, and high energetic band. We we are going to keep it that way, but we're going to explore some new territories I suppose and see where we're gonna end up is that also like one of those bands that you need need to have like yourself also that you can basically be fully creative that you have another outlet where to put your music in that's uh, that's very important for me uh, I think that it's almost necessary yeah, yeah, to yeah. have both arenas yeah yes so a bit about the Saturicon plans. You are currently writing an album, so how far is that at the moment? We have come very far. We are trying to narrow down a massive amount of material and start to pick the bits and pieces that we are actually going to bring into the album itself. And, and uh, we will probably start recording in the fall. Okay, it's going to be released next year. Okay, what about the covers album that is in the work? What's the thing with that? We haven't forgotten about it, but at some point we found out that we were very inspired to just create our own material. Okay, so you and got as long as hold yeah, that. and as long as you have the steam uh, for for that project, so yeah, it's better to just yeah, yeah, move ahead with it because material. yeah. The creative yeah, work the is yeah, yeah, exactly. The creative time. work is is more important than anything else. And when you feel that flow of inspiration, you better seize the chance yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and move along. And and we will return to the cover project uh, when the album is done. Okay. So yeah. there's still two projects in the works. There are. Yes. Okay. So thank you, man, very much for the time and best of luck for tonight's show as well as for the future. Anything thank you much. want to say to your Finnish fans as last words? No, I want to go out there and play. That's that's 
how I want to communicate to, to my fans. Okay, yeah. thank you man very much for the chat. And thank you.